Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from Darren. Let's listen to what Darren has to say. Hi, Lloyd. I hope you and your family are okay. Um, feel free to use this voicemail, or whatever they call it nowadays, voice message on one of your videos if you want to. If not, uh, that's fair enough. My name is Darren Spratt. I'm fine with you using my name. Um, you might recognize the name. You might not because I played football with you. And I was there when you dislocated your knee, which on one of your recent videos, I think, you mentioned that you've dislocated your knee and it was really bad. Yeah, I was there to see it. And it was quite bad. To be fair, you screamed like you'd been shot. <laughs> the ambulance came and everything, but obviously you survived, you survived. But I've always been the black sheep of my family. Um, my wife, her family woke up because of your videos, and my wife did, whereas my family uh, are full-on equilibrium-style Jehovah's Witnesses. And by that, I mean the film Equilibrium, because that's the best way I can describe them. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, it just feels like every so many hours they take a pill. Um, watching watching the videos, and it rammed down my throats. Uh, institutionalized, I would say. People who've seen Equilibrium would know exactly what I'm on about, if they can compare it to Witnesses. Um, but that's my family. And for that reason, this is my question. Um, stroke conversation. My wife thinks that I'm kind of going through some bad things because before lockdown um, is when I started to watch your videos and I've not seen my family since then. I woke up. I don't know if I mentioned I wasn't baptized. And before lockdown, I said to my mom and dad, what would you do if Ashton was disfellowshipped, which is my wife. Um, and they basically said, well, we, we just couldn't speak to her then, could we? But because of the loophole of me being unbaptized, obviously they can see me when they want, they can see the granddaughter when they want, which I didn't like because it's conditional love, as we know. Um, and that's the way I view it. So... Ever since before lockdown, uh, I've been watching more and more videos. I've been learning more about uh, the truth, about the truth, so to speak. And it's just, it's made me resent my family more than they probably would me because I'm the one that knows the truth, so to speak, whereas they think they've got the truth and would instantly cut me off if I was baptized, just like they'd instantly cut my wife off if she decided to say she doesn't want to be Joe's with us anymore. And to be fair, the only reason she's not said that is because of that situation that if she says it, I then have to deal with my parents. But I'm in the position now where I don't actually want to see my parents. I've not seen them since before the lockdown. I've been making excuses. They probably know something's up, but they also know that obviously I'm going through. Um, well, they'll think that Darren's struggling or Ashton's struggling or they're struggling the truth or they, they, they probably think, they might even think we're not Joe's witnesses, I don't know. But I've built this block, this guard up where I, I don't want to see my family anymore. Some people might think you're stupid. Take your family where you can. But to me, what's the point in being with your family when it's like talking to robots, when it's like equilibrium, where you, you're not speaking to them in a real world, a real life, a real mind, whereas we're woken up completely and they're still drones. So it's different the way I f I'm feeling like they, I, f I just feel like I don't want to see them. And I'm just wondering how you would go about that because it's very difficult.
but also easy at the same time. So any suggestions? Take care. Look after your family. Well, thank you so much for leaving that message. I like those last words. It's very difficult, but also easy at the same time. I think you've sort of answered your own question right there. It is a difficult situation, but it's also kind of easy and kind of self-explanatory, isn't it? Um, by the way, I really love it when I'm able to reconnect with people who knew me as a Jehovah's Witness. I don't think you and I knew each other that well, but it sounds like we were playing football together and you were there on that fateful night when I dislocated my knee. And yes, I was screaming. I, unashamedly, I was screaming like I had been shot, as you point out. So thank you so much for reconnecting. That's really nice. It's nice to get some reminder that all of this stuff early in my life really happened, that it wasn't just some bizarre dream. <laughs> because when everyone who you knew as a youth or as a child growing up in the religion is no longer speaking to you or very few people who knew you are speaking to you it can kind of feel like none of it really happened so thanks for reminding me that i'm not going crazy those things really did happen but to your predicament the, the only complicated thing i see here is well first of all you say you've been making excuses with your parents who you resent and by the way it's okay to resent them it's okay to want to keep toxic people out of your life you talk about other ex-Jehovah's Witnesses perhaps viewing you as stupid you're stupid take your family when you can inevitably someone's going to feel that way <laughs> You know, lots of people watch my videos and there will be a range of views, especially among those who are being shunned by their parents. But I think probably the majority of my viewers would say just because they're your parents doesn't mean they get to treat you however they like. They get to be toxic towards you and your family and carve you up and say, oh, if... Ashton, if your wife were to say anything bad, we wouldn't speak to her. You know, there's a limit to how much you should have people like that in your life. And it's healthy to keep toxic people out of your life. And it sounds like that's what you're doing. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, these are their rules. This is their indoctrination. This is their fanaticism. Presumably, you'd be fine with having them in your life if they weren't treating you this way or if they weren't threatening to shun your wife if she were to speak her mind, which is essentially what they've said. Presumably, that you'd be fine with having them around and with them being an influence in your life if they weren't acting in such a juvenile and narcissistic way you're just protecting yourself you're protecting your mental health and you're protecting your family that's totally understandable the other thing though that concerns me a little bit is that you mentioned that they've had some contact with their granddaughter which i'm guessing is your daughter uh, i don't know how recently they've had contact because you say that you've not seen them since before lockdown well that's quite some time um, and again, you've been making excuses, which I'll come to. So, yeah, you, I guess you need to have a conversation with your wife about, or well, this is, I'm, I'm not telling you what to do, by the way. I'm just saying how I would do things. I, I would want to reach some agreement on, you know, are we okay with our daughter continuing to be influenced or to come under the influence of this indoctrinated side of our family that has has these messed up views about shunning, are we okay with subjecting our daughter to that? So that's a conversation that I guess you need to have. Maybe you already have had that conversation. But 
you know, if you're all on the same page as a family, that you don't want negativity and toxicity in your life, like you say, it's easy. You know, just make the decision. No one's judging you. I totally relate and support your decision to guard your mental health and, again, not have that negativity in your life. It wouldn't surprise me, though, if even when you feel the way you feel and you feel so adamant about your parents' behavior to the point where, like you say, you resent them, it wouldn't surprise me if there's still going to be one or two hang-ups, them being your parents. And I wonder whether it's these kind of residual feelings that are prompting you to care so much enough to leave this message. Clearly, you're thinking about them to some extent. Clearly, there is some conflict there. Or you wouldn't feel compelled to share this situation. I'm just wondering whether it might help you to get some closure if rather than just stop speaking to them and, like you say, make excuses, I'm wondering whether it might be worthwhile just sitting down with them and saying look here's the situation and there's going to be some brutal honesty here so brace yourselves you know because what's stopping you you're unbaptized you don't have to fear anything you can just sit down and tell it like it is and i think if you were to do that if you were to sit down and communicate openly with your parents and say probably you're wondering why I've been making excuses, why I'm not allowing you to see me or my family or whatever. Well, here's the reason, you know. I, You could even say, I resent you. I think I resent you more than you resent me. And here's why. I think honesty is needed. And I think if you were to be honest with your parents... It wouldn't necessarily, and I'm not suggesting you be disrespectful or, you know, combative or anything. I just think it would help you to get some closure. I think probably closure would be helpful for you so that they know where you're at and you know where they're at. You're both on the same page and you can then draw a line under things. I think you have nothing to lose really by just expressing yourself and saying, the way you feel about my wife isn't okay. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. And here's what I'm doing about it. I think it would be better if we don't see each other. Unless you can shake yourselves free from what I consider to be uh, a cult. In which case, maybe we can look at revisiting our relationship and opening it up again but I don't think it's taking us anywhere and I feel the need I feel there is an importance an urgency in shielding my mental health and that of my family from juvenile school ground behavior that I certainly haven't signed up to and which none of us should be subjected to no matter whether we were baptized or not I think there would be some merit in the closure that would come from having that conversation. But I can't tell you what to do. I'm just sharing what I would do in your shoes. This isn't me instructing you or anything. Um, we all just have to navigate these things the way that suits us. And it could be that it works for you just not having that conversation. That's totally fine. Um, I also need to <laughs> repeat my disclaimer that if you're really struggling for whatever reason, you did in fact say your wife thinks you're going through some bad things. If you're really struggling and if it's really messing with you and impacting on your mental health, you please consider getting some therapy and getting some counseling. That's the, the best way to navigate through these issues. But if all you needed was to get some validation and to know that you're not crazy or not a bad person for feeling the way you feel about your parents, I'm here to give it in spades. It's totally understandable. You're well within your rights to block out negative, toxic people from your life. I just wonder whether 
there might be some closure to be derived from making it official and sitting down and saying, look, here is the situation, just so we're all on the same page, okay? But um, yeah, I hope that's helpful for you. Thank you for calling in again. I hope we get to meet in person again, although hopefully under different circumstances than the last time. <laughs> so thanks for calling in. If you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message, but that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.